So now in this video, I'm going to be going over building the knot gate on the breadboard. This knot gate is going to be the switch version of the knot gate, which is mostly for demonstration purposes, although you could use it in an actual circuit if you wanted to. But uh, in any case, the main thing about the knot gate is that when the input is on, basically when you have the switch on, then the output is off. When you turn the switch off, then the output is on. And this switch is normally on, so our output's going to be off to begin with until I press the button. We'll look at that later, but uh, mostly we're going to focus on the building of this circuit. So now we zoomed in to the uh, schematic, and there's also kind of an illustrative diagram down here. With the illustrated diagram, I use 9 volts and 470 or higher that resistor is needed because we got 9 volts and we're going to end up creating a short circuit so we definitely want the 470 there the LED does drop uh, voltage but in any case in this schematic I don't have the uh, voltage or the resistor numbers on there so that's something you're going to have to make a judgment call based on the uh, power supply you use you'll have a minimum value resistor of course you can go higher just in this case the LED won't be as bright but in any case I have here 470 ohm resistor and it connects directly to the positive uh, power supply so one side connects to the power supply the other side to where the switch comes here also it comes to the LED we'll get to that next so there we go we have the switch connected to the positive power supply through the resistor. So now the LED. Of course LEDs are semiconductors and the long lead, the anode is this side of the LED if you haven't trimmed it already. We got one longer or shorter. Here's the cathode. That's the shorter lead. Also there's a flat edge on there. But in any case the long lead of the LED connects the same spot where the resistor and the switch connect. So one important thing to know is that everywhere two or more components connect is called a node. So you might hear this referred to as a node where they make the connection. So the voltage is the same for all three components at this point. But uh, longer lead the LED comes there and the switch has a gap between its two pins into the power rail so the uh, long lead the anode is connected to where the pin is the short lead the cathode is at that gap it doesn't connect to the switch there at all so this is just a free roll but now the cathode's there now the cathode and one side of the switch connect to ground and so we can do this in a couple ways but if you see here I misplace this switch so that I can't uh, connect it directly to ground with the uh, jumper and so it would be better to have positioned the switch where I could to begin with but for now I'm just gonna connect the LED to this uh, rail here and then uh, for this one where it jumps the gap I could kind of take a jumper and uh, put it at an angle but for now I'm just going to take a jumper wire because it's much more uh, flexible in areas that it can reach but uh, you can see the cathode of the LED goes to ground so does one the other side of the switch from this side and so we have this connection where they're both connected to each other through this route here and so now zooming in we get a better look here we got the resistor at the positive rail comes to this row where it connects to the LED and the top pin of the switch. Remember the pin across here is also connected there. So we could attach components here. They would all be connected if we really wanted to. But uh, we got it there. The other side of the LED comes down one row where this jumper connects it to ground. Now we could just stretch this uh, pin one more row to there if we really wanted to I keep my LEDs two spaces apart as much as possible but some people they they really like to just stretch the LED to make connections 
as you can see here components often make good uh, connections in place of jumpers when possible but uh, anyway this side of the switch here I have the jumper wire coming over there and it connects here to a jumper cable and ultimately connects to the power supply so now we're gonna apply power with a 9 volt battery and we just plug the uh, black jumper into the blue rail here this is the ground and uh, the red of course into the red rail now these are stranded wires every once in a while I kinda gotta twist them to uh, get them to grip each other again they were kinda separating but uh, I already did that so it should go in pretty easily and there you go you can see that the LED is lit up so the LED is considered the output the switch the input the switch is off right now it's open and the LED is on normally with the switch when the switch is off the LED is off the load is off now I close the switch the switch is actually on the switch turns on when you close it but you see the LED turned off one last thing while we're uh, still at this point when you remove the 9 volt battery make sure these two wires don't connect each other especially when you plug them into the same rail like this I have a tendency I pull I just yank them out and they go right to each other so it's a good idea to pull them apart separately like this it's really easy they kinda wanna hug each other normally so I kinda open them up like this and try to keep them separated so now we're gonna look at another way to wire this circuit of course it's doing exactly the same thing it's basically wired the same way except for the ground is over here so I mentioned before this side of the uh, top pin of the switch there is connected directly to that side there's always a connection there so if you can plug something in over there you can plug it over there it's uh, connected so we have the LED again make sure the uh, long lead of the LED goes towards the more positive side of the power supply short lead of the LED towards the more negative that's a uh, common mistake you could make really easily I've done it a few times where I accidentally put it in backwards but uh, we made sure we had it right there and as I said it's coming uh, to the negative rail we're gonna put the negative side of the battery over here now we're gonna take this jumper again to the bottom pin there same thing the bottom pin on both sides are always connected so all of these rows now are connected because of the switch and uh, we're gonna go to ground so even though I'm closing the switch it gives you a path down here no matter which way it goes and now we're gonna apply the battery and I've been having a problem with uh, these wires as I said I had to twist them it went in pretty easy then but uh, I think I may have to cut the ends off here and uh, and then I go with some new wire but anyways they went in pretty easily and again you see the LED is on just like it was before the switch is off but the currents flowing through where it's always connected now when I turn the switch on current flows through the switch the LED turns off and here's another option I didn't change the circuitry at all but I have the uh, power supply on uh, these two uh, rails here but uh, on this one side of the board the positive has this jumper here from positive rail there to the positive rail there and also I have the negative to negative there but nothing's uh, connected to this side here they're all connected there but uh, I normally do this in my videos I may not mention it or show it or something but if you see both rails have power and I'm using a battery instead of the 5 volt power supply which powers both rails then you should know I'm using these two jumpers and finally here's some diagrams I drew I drew all of these diagrams by the way in the past I just copied and pasted them into this diagram so you're gonna see some uh, differences but uh, in any case here's a diagram I drew at one time and you can see the current pads when the switch is not pressed remember the LED was on and when the switch was pressed remember the LED was off it takes about 1.8 in that range volts for the switch to turn on or for the LED I mean to turn on when I push the button that basically gives a direct current path to ground on both sides of the LED 
there's a voltage difference across the resistor zero volts here nine volts there so current flows through the resistor and then continues on the path of uh, basically zero resistance there's no reason for it to go this way because there's uh, zero volts on that side and zero volts on that side so this whole area has uh, zero volts now when you let go of the switch of course there's a practically infinite amount of resistance between this point and so the current just easily flows through the LED there's a uh, 1.8 volt difference and then the resistor absorbs the rest